know the truth. How do you know it's the truth if you don't know who the people are? You can't trust somebody if you don't know them. You can't trust me. Obviously, when I you know, preach what I'm preaching, you know, it's on behalf of God. But generally speaking, if you don't know someone, you can't trust them, can you? You can't say, oh, because I'm born this way, I'm just going to believe it. Then anyone can say anything, and everyone's right. The truth can't be more than truth. It's one truth. Jesus has another hour. Yeah, true. Oh, yeah. Mark 13, 32, yeah? Jesus, Jesus clearly said he doesn't know the hour. Uh, Father knows the hour, in the day of judgment, when it's going to happen, the day of resurrection. So if Jesus doesn't know the hour, he cannot be God anymore. The, the only answer that a Christian can give you, they said, no, here he was speaking as a man, not as God. But even this one cannot be a response to the argument I'm bringing to the table. You know why? Because Jesus as God is not a father. Even Jesus as God. Jesus as God is the son. And Jesus in the Bible clearly, explicitly negated the knowledge of the hour from everyone except the father. Even the Holy Spirit is not the hour. Okay? And then, for example, does God have a God? So if Jesus is God, we should have no God. But in the Bible, Jesus had, he said, I'm going to my God and your God. So my father and your father. So Jesus again have a God. Then how can he be a, a God? It doesn't make any sense. And you know, in the Quran, Allah tell us that about Jesus and Mary both used to eat food. Why? Because this is not God's nature. God is self-sufficient. God is not in need of nothing. God is not in need of food. You know, this human nature. So, there's many clear passages in the Bible you can see Jesus cannot be God. And that's what I say to her. Like, you may go back to the priest or the local preacher close to you, but you need to use, you know, your natural born just to understand whether this response is actually valid. Is it plausible? Oh, yeah, we believe God is, you know, all knowledgeable all time, but just humbled himself for like a couple minutes. Can you not see that you just agreed that God is all known to at all times and you said it effectively That's here. Paradox. It's, not. it's a paradox. I know, I know, I'm just giving an example, sorry. So I just wanted you no, to like... You don't believe what, sorry. So Jesus is human, how is he God? Yeah, so, so if he was fully human, so when he says that he doesn't know the hour, which part he has not the hour, as God or as human? So, so, so that's, that, that, that's a paradox as well. Because you know, there's certain things called impossible. It's, it's impossible to happen. For example, to say God exists and does not exist at the same time. This has nothing to do with God's power. This goes and God and guess uh, uh, this goes and guess God's nature. God's nature to have perfect life. So if God has no life, have no has no life, he cannot be the same God. It's impossible to seem to be the same God. When you say it cannot be, doesn't mean it doesn't have the power. It means it's impossible, which doesn't make any sense. Because having no life is deficiency. 
So to say gold is so powerful, it can become deficient. That's not powerful. That is, deficient is no power. Understand? Deficiency goes and gets one of the attributes of God's power or God assets, which is perfect life. So the Christians, what they're doing, they, 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 they don't differentiate between what God is and what God does. What, what we're talking about here is not what God does. We're talking about what God is. From God's perfection to have a perfect life. From God's perfection to have a perfect knowledge. From God's perfection to be self-sufficient all the time. So when you tell me, yeah, God is able to all things to become imperfect, but you, got, you are going and guess God to be perfect. Imperfect does not make God perfect. You understand? So, so this is how Satan deceives many Christians by making them believe something which doesn't make any sense and thinking that you are restricting God. Because if you, I believe the Christians are restricting God. Because if God becomes imperfect, it's been restricted. Because imper imperfection, God and guess God's perfection. So when you say, what, I'm talking about what God is. If you tell me Jesus was God and a man at the same time, that is a paradox. Because if God become a man, he has to go and guess his own nature, which is being God. Because to be a man, you have to be imperfect. To be a man, Jesus, he was imperfect in knowledge. He was born ignorant. He had to be taught by Jewish rabbis. Imagine God, someone teaching God. How would you do I mean, uh, God is, teaches but and he's how, not far, to be taught. What we say, we say subhanallah, this statement. Subhanallah means far away Allah from this evil attribute which has been attributed to him. Because it's imperfection. You with me? So that's why we need in the Quran Allah said Subhana Rabbi Subhana Rabbi Karabi is letting Amma Yasifun. Subhana means Allah is far away from any imperfection. Who is Allah? The Lord of Al Isa, the Lord of the perfect might. You know? So Allah is far away what people attribute to him from deficiency. One of them to have a son, one of them that he became human being. You have your own intellect. That's why what we're talking about here. We're not talking about some deep issues. We're talking about the most basic uh, concept of God. I'm not telling. I'm not telling you how God looks. No, you know. So what we're talking about here? We're talking about things which we know based upon Scripture about God to be perfect. Likewise, our sun is in it, our natural creation. So, if you really want to believe in Jesus, the way Jesus wants to believe in it is by by following Islam, not Paul. You follow Paul, not Jesus. <laughs> Do you know that? And about Islam, we look at we look at Yeah, I'll give you an example. Example of that. Paul, he said there's no circumcision anymore. Jesus was circumcised. Paul, when, when the young boy asked Jesus how to enter the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said to him to keep the commandment of God. What was Paul's answer? Paul's answer was, is to I believe in Jesus died for your sins. It's about faith, it's not about the law anymore. That's not Jesus teaching, you know? That's why Paul had a problem with Jesus' half-brother, James. That's why Paul, if you look, there's, there's, there's a passage in the Bible where Paul said, if anyone comes to you preaching other than this gospel, don't believe in it. Why? Because he's already trying to brainwash his followers to reject any other gospels, even if it's coming from true followers of Jesus, you know, so, so, uh, uh, uh. Christianity, we believe the true followers of Jesus, they will be in paradise, but people who are following Christianity now, they are not following Jesus, and to go back to the main point here, so how can you believe God is perfect and imperfect at the same time? Did God become human? So when you become human, do you, you, you become imperfect or not? So, so, so God, but in the Bible said, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word became flesh. So it became something. Became language, it became something. So if it became something, to become something, like now, it, 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 you have to change your nature because you cannot become a human. You still have good nature. You're not human anymore. Human have they, they have their special attributes, uh, attributes which distinguish them from animals. And God, He has a, a, a perfect attribute which differentiates Him 
from the creation. So how God, who is uncreated, became created? Doesn't make any sense. That's why you know we look to Islam. Uh, Islam goes around our sound reason and our uh, our sound natural inclination. There is only one God, based upon God's wisdom, based upon His mercy, based upon His justice. Set chose people amongst us. Jesus, one of them. Moses, one of them. Abraham, one of them. Ishmael, one of them. Isaac, Noah, Abraham. The last of the Prophet Muhammad, he sent them to us to teach us how to worship him. If I was alive at the time of Jesus, the only way to be successful in my life are to follow Jesus at that time. Before Jesus, if I was alive at the time of Moses, in order for me to be successful, I have to follow Moses. Now, the last Prophet is Muhammad. When you become a Muslim, you know losing no Jesus. Like I said, you can believe in Jesus the way that Jesus, the mighty messenger, the true Messiah, wants to believe in him. Let me ask you, what was the belief of Abraham? What was Abraham? Huh? God is one. Islam is Arabic terminology. If we do translate it into English, it means to submit yourself to God according to God's teaching. So Abraham submit to God is only one God and follow God's teaching. So when we say he was a Muslim, that's why I mean Islam. Abraham was not Christian, he was not a Jew. Because Judaism came after. He came uh, based upon Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham. Okay? Likewise, even Jesus, what was his belief system? What did he believe? Did he believe, was he a Christian? No, he was not. I'm a Christian to follow Christ. And Paul called you a Christian. Okay? Jesus never called his followers Christians. So, now what was he believe? That's why in the Quran tells us that all the prophets and messengers were Muslims. Doesn't mean they were following Prophet Muhammad. It means they submit themselves to God or call to God's teaching. You see what I'm saying? So, what can you choose from if you don't mind asking? Ethiopia. So, again, when you look to, uh, you know, Israelites, are you? You're an Israelite? You're not an Israelite. I mean, even Jesus came for the Israelites. When the Canaanite woman in, uh, I believe in Matthew, yes, Matthew 20, something more. Matthew, when the Canaanite woman came to him seeking his help, he rebuked her. She was in desperate need. I don't believe that story, by the way, but that's what the Bible says. So he, when his followers told him to help her, she had a problem with her daughter. Her daughter, she was possessed by a demon. He said, I should not give a bread to the little dogs. Because he said, I have been only sent to the lost house sheep of Israel. Not to you, not to the Arabs, not to the lost sheep of Israel. That's why Prophet Muhammad was sent to everyone. You know? But Jesus was sent to the Israelites. Okay? So, there, there is many problems with the, with, the, with the Christianity, the modern Christianity. As for Jesus' teaching, what he came with is perfect. We believe Jesus uh, Messiah, true Messiah. You know, we believe he was a mighty messenger, but we don't believe he was God or the Son of God. Allah said, "Wa qalu taqabbal rahmanu wa la da." لقد جئتم شيئا إدا تكاد السماوات يتفطن منه وتنشق الأرض وتخر الجبال هدا أن دعوا للرحمن ولدا. The meaning of the verse, Allah said, they claim Allah had as a son. You have come with the most evil statement. Allah, Allah goes on to say, it's not befitting for the most beneficent to have a son. Because to have a son is human nature. You want to pass on your inheritance to him, or to her, and so on. That is not God's nature to have children, you know? So, what do you think about said so far? Does it make sense about Jesus? Yeah, no, no, study. I'm not telling you to convert right now, don't worry. Like, study, take your time. Some people do become Muslim straight away, but you can study. We have leaflets here, you can read. Do you live around this area? We are, we are here every Friday. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to uh, uh, come and ask uh, questions, okay? But, uh, like, you know, we uh, want good for mankind, okay? And, uh, when you look at what's happening to the world right now, you know, one of the miracles of Islam was shows us that Prophet Muhammad was a true messenger of Allah, 
the legislation he came with. The legislation he came with is perfect for our life. For example, Islam came to preserve five things. Okay? Islam came to, Islam came to preserve the true religion. That's why Islam will not allow it to create any created thing. That's why the, the oneness of God is very important and following the true religion is very important. Secondly, Islam came to preserve the intellect. That's why alcohol and drugs is forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to protect wealth. That's why interest and gambling is forbidden. Likewise, Islam came to protect family, lineage. That's why adultery and fornication is forbidden. Lastly, Islam came to preserve people's lives. That's why killing people unjustly, committing suicide is forbidden. So these five things, if we do preserve them, we have good society. The opposite is alcohol. Alcohol is bad for us, individually and collectively. Even a small amount of alcohol is very bad for you. The scientists came to agreement, even a small amount of alcohol is not safe. In the Christianity, you're allowed to drink alcohol. Why? You believe it is Jesus' blood. Okay? Likewise, when it comes to interest, interest destroys society. Gambling, likewise. Fornication, adultery, likewise. Okay? And the most evil thing is when you turn away from the true religion, the true God. So these five things which destroy our societies, what we see, we see they have, it's, these vices have been glamour, glamorized, being propagated, being glorified. Alcohol, drugs, gambling, interest. And what distinguishes Islam from other religions, because you might tell me, yes, even other religions, they prohibit uh, drugs and so on. But Islam not just prohibition, Islam has Sharia, which is a law for the criminals. There's deterrent law that if you commit this crime, you will face this punishment. Because human beings will not stay with crimes and evil things except by way of punishment. That's why we see everywhere in UK CCTV in operation. CCTV in operation. You see, psychologically, they kept to know. Humans, in order for them to, de to deter them from any crimes, you have to let them know there is a consequences for their crimes. So they've been watched to analyze. So, so these five things have been glorified by who? Those who are in power. That's why majority of times, those who are very hostile to Islam are those in power because they are making the money from these evil vices, from gambling, interest, banks, uh, uh, what they call prostitution, and all of these crazy things, porn, and so on. That's why, because they have a lot of money, they utilize the mainstream media to make Islam look bad, even though Islam is good for us individually and collectively. The question you should ask yourself, sister, how a man that existed 1,400 years ago, Prophet Muhammad was able to come with this detailed, perfect way of life. He couldn't read and write. We have these politicians around the world, studied in the best universities around the world, yet they cannot resolve the problems we are facing. For example, knife crimes. Young boys at the age of 15, 14, carrying a big knife. Why? Because they know if they're gonna stab someone, they're gonna go to prison. Prison here is better than outside. I'm not saying go to prison by the way, yeah? But literally, you have, when you're outside, you don't have no meal three times a day. In prison, you have a meal three times a day. In prison, you have PlayStation 2, I don't know what PlayStation now, what number is it now. You have, uh, uh, you go to gym. You have free education, everything's free there. And you don't pay no rent. When it's done, someone carrying knives, there's a severe punishment. You see? People now see children carrying knives, stabbing each other for post code, killing. But only time you say, if you kill someone, you'll be killed. And you put him in Chabaga Square and you establish the law upon him, you see how many children will be scared to commit the crime. Now, the, 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 when I was in prison in 2005, we never had social media. Now they, they, they have social media glamorizing their lifestyle. The crime is crazy. SubhanAllah, it's mad how they're glamorizing it. Like the guy singing about it, being happy about it. SubhanAllah, so that's why Islam is a perfect way of life. Because capitalism is based upon making money even from the suffering of the people. But again, Islam will not allow uh, singers who glorifies crimes and, 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 and evil things to give them platforms uh, to, to propagate their evil things.
no, no. If you're a singer, should not be. No, no. You should be. Someone should speak to you. You advise. You cannot entrust. You cannot. How you entrust youth with someone who glorifies evil life or crime lifestyle? Because I get because it makes money. You see, that's what Islam, Allah, when He legislates something, there is no bias involved, no evil desire involved. Because Allah wants good for His creation. But when human beings legislate things, they have bias within them, they have evil desires within them. You know? So, subhanAllah, that's why many people go back to the Sharia law, which they call Sharia law, which is divine law. Sharia, many people, English people or the French, they get scared of this word. Sharia law. But they don't know what is Sharia law. Sharia law is not right there to cause harm to people. Rather, Sharia law is there to protect the innocent and to deal with the criminals. But that's why I said, I said those who hate Sharia law are either ignorant or themselves are criminals. You understand? What do you think what I said so far? Because I don't want to keep talking. If you have any question or you think I said something wrong, you're more than welcome to ask or correct or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course, it is just. Sharia law is in the Bible. In the Old Testament, the Torah. Because remember, uh, Jesus never had authority to establish Sharia. But Moses had authority to establish Sharia. So it doesn't make any sense that uh, Isa, because Jesus and, and John, Yahya, his cousin, they were living under who? Under the Roman Empire. You know? So he didn't, he didn't have the, the power to establish Sharia. But Prophet Moses, that's why the Sharia is in the Bible. Sharia is just, of course, from God. So that's why, like I said to you, for example, if you kill someone, you're not going to put him in prison. No, Sharia, you'll be killed. The Sharia gives choices to the, to the person, to the family. Either you forgive, which is good as well. If so you look at the person, maybe he killed my brother by mistake. Maybe he was very angry and he regrets it. So if I forgive him, I go, Allah teach us to forgive as well. But if this man is known to commit crime, they are forgiving him, is going to allow him to do more crime. So the Sharia comes in and says, no, no, no. We have to set him as an example for the other criminals. Like, you know, look to Sharia law how good for our psychological thinking. Imagine you have a child and your neighbor commits crime and he goes to prison. Hey, like I said, your prisoner is very good. You know, you come out a healthy person. He was skinny, this neighbor. You know, he was very skinny. He went in, he came out looking good, healthy. Your child thinking, where did he go? He said, but he went prison. He's thinking, prison is good. He was looking like a dead person, now he's looking good. But if he steals something, commits crime, who deserves capital punishment, for example, is that if you steal something, not potato or tomato or onion, no, you steal something which is valuable, okay, then in Islam, your hand should be cut off. So if your child sees someone's hand be cut off, say, ah, because he stole something, that's why, oh, I don't want to steal, I don't want to lose my hand, you understand? So psychologically, he's going to be scared to commit crime. You know, that's why no one knows in detail how to deter the criminals like the one who created mankind. That was Sharia in the Bible, killing the prostate, killing the uh, adultery in the Bible, the Old Testament. Again? No, we're not judging, it's a good question. Rather, if imagine I want to do evil thing, then I fight against it, I get a reward. You know, Allah will not judge me for just having a thought. Allah will not judge me, judge me for just having desires. As long as I don't implement it or say it, you know? So I, if I do fight against my evil desires, my evil thoughts, then I'll be rewarded by Allah. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. Some people that they will not leave a sin and set by punishment as a reality. So that's what Allah put the punishment. That's why they say there's, there's sorry to come. That's what one of our leaders, Uthman bin Affan, he said, Yazi Allah bi Sultan, ma la yazi bil Quran. 
Allah will remove evil things through the leader, that which does not be removed by the Quran. Because Quran is given admonition by the leader, who Allah gave him the authority to establish Sharia, then some people they will never leave the evil things except by establishing the capital punishment upon them. This is the reality. You know? So if he left the sin because he's scared of the punishment, not of Allah, he's scared to be caught, he will not be rewarded. But if he leaves it off because he's scared of Allah, and he loves Allah, not just scared of Allah, but you love Allah as well. How am I going to disobey someone who took care of me all my life, who blessed me with his uh, blessings, with his favors? So I said, no, stay away from this. But of course, no one is perfect. All of us will put into mistakes. So be this. That's what Allah, one of his beautiful names, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, full of mercy. You know, Allah is the most generous, the way do it, the all loving, you know, the most loving. With the one who has perfect attribute of love, you know, Al Afu, the one who over pardon, you know, but also Allah is just Al Adil, likewise Al Hakim, Al Aziz, the Almighty, you know. So there are certain people, if you give them an admonition, they will stay with the evil things. But some people will never respond to accept punishment from the leader. And when I speak about Sharia, I'm not to make, make, make myself clear. I'm not saying. Like this evil sex within Islam, which Islam is free from their teaching, they come here and say, We want to take over the government. No, because Sharia has two meanings in general, which is worshiping God alone, taking care of your neighbors, calling people to Islam, our Sharia, or the capital punishment, which is only the should be carried out by the government in the spirit. Like you know, this evil sex they go to, uh, uh, to the parliament and say, We're going to take over the parliament. That's what Islam teaches. Another question, do I want Sharia law for this country? I want good for this country. But I, how they establish Sharia, we mean the, 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 which is implementing Sharia, if they're not Muslims. So first, I want this country to become Muslim. I want good for them without fighting them with a good way, in a peaceful manner, because I want good for them. I believe Islam is good for me, so I do a respectful way without forcing them. That's what Islam Even they become Muslim, of course, don't you dictate if you believe in God, he is the creator of everything as a perfect knowledge. Don't you dictate, you should follow his law. You see? So, because I see something important to Muslims, you want Sharia law in this country? If they say yes, the, the, the people are watching from the non Muslims, they think, oh, he wants to keep us. He wants to force a, a non Muslim woman to wear hijab. You know, no, that's not Sharia. This misunderstanding, which the media has been uh, pushing, mainstream media, based upon the evil sect that has with Tahrir and Jamshad and other people. They have been propagate this uh, misunderstanding of Sharia. But now, if I want Sharia, I mean, I want to become Muslim and follow God's law, of course, because I want good for them. And I believe that it's good for mankind. In every place and every time. Exactly. Do you have any other questions? just correct is the all just the ultimate just so how come the question i'm going to think when you reach is part of my answer how come god gave the law to be implemented by Moses and his and the rabbis that's an old testament because no god literally is going to come implement the law to you god gave you the law to follow for people with authority you understand yeah so for the people authority to implement that law and that is part of the justice and he showed us that if you want to be just amongst yourself, God gave us a law to follow. You see, that's why you know Sharia is based upon justice and wisdom and mercy. Mercy for the innocent ones and also for the criminals. Because when you receive the punishment in this life, God will, uh, that, that will be protection for you and guess the punishment of the hereafter, which is way, way worse. You know? So when you receive, sorry. 
نعم شريعة الله دازن أبلمنت أبلمنت النون مستمس رأى الإسلام شريعة في الشغل they talk about tolerance okay the Islamic شريعة country the Christians they have their own court except if they did something which involved in the country or they want to rule by Islamic شريعة then yes the شريعة applies to them but generally speaking the شريعة applies to Muslims for example who wear hijab how the Christians should be Muslims or for example other Islamic law so that's why Islamically speaking, in under Islamic Sharia, the Christians they will have their own courts. They will have uh, uh, they appoint a leader among them, and the Muslim leader will say, okay, this is gonna be your judge, if you have union. That's why historically speaking, many Christian countries open their gate for the Muslims. In Spain, now they found out many manuscripts, bad days, uh, when the Muslim came to Spain, they opened cities for the Muslims because the Christians were oppressing them. Like in Egypt, the Coptic were being oppressed by the, the Romans Christians. You see, Amr ibn al-As when he came, they opened their gate for the, the Muslims and they saw the Muslims again as their saviors. You see what I'm saying? Even the Jewish people likewise in, in Spain, we you know about uh, uh, Inquisition Courts? Inquisition Courts occurred in the year 1492 by the Christians, Catholic Christians in Spain. Spain and Portugal, when the, the, the Christians took over Andalusia and they started killing the Muslims, forcing the Jewish people and the Muslims to become a Christian, or they will kill them. A lot of Jewish people fled to Muslim countries, to Algeria, to Morocco, to Belgium, uh, to, 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 to Egypt, to Tunisia, to Turkey, you know, because they knew that's where, Alhamdulillah, so and what, not, that doesn't mean there was no Muslim leaders who committed crime against Christians or Jewish people. There was, which got against Islamic teachers. So I'm not going to tell every Muslim leader for the history was good. No, they were evil even against their own people. Okay, so that's why you know that's why sister, you notice the Western world has turned away from Christianity because it's, it's, it's Christians it's about being church, love God, love everyone. That's it. No, Islam is not. Islam is not only for uh, 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 worshippers, for priests, for imam. No, Islam for the government too. The government has to put Islam as well. You know, Islam is not just for 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 a group of people. Islam came. Allah, Allah is the Creator and the God and the one who deserves to be worshipped by everyone. That's why look how Islam is spreading around the world. The fastest growing religion on the face of the earth is Islam. Who's doing the job? Even though there's many barriers to prevent people accepting Islam, yet Islam is spreading in the Western world. Because Allah mentioned that in the Quran, that Islam will spread. Because Western, especially women, they say Islam oppress women. But majority of reverts in Britain are women. If they see the true freedom is to become a servant, of, to become a slave of the Creator, not a slave of your desires and, and, and Satan and society. See, the only religion that is standing firm and strongly against this evil agenda that has been pushed by this secret society is Islam. You know, Pope accepted, they said there's no problem with gay people. So you can see, you know, you can see Christianity keep changing. And a lot. Huh? You welcome here. Take this. I'm going to give you something which is very important here. The message is very important to me. Thank you. Have uh, you got that one yet? And you have, you have this one, Jesus. Yeah. There's a woman in Islam. Who is there? Uh, Shepsi. Are you going last week? You were here last week, yeah? Oh, you keep coming. You're good. Keep coming, inshallah. All right. So thank you very much for talking.